matter makes it all up. At first glance, an ecosystem may seem like a bunch of unrelated things that just happen to be in the same place. Different kinds of animals are running, swimming, or flying around. Plants are growing in various shapes and sizes. Besides all these living organisms, there are also non-living parts in the ecosystem, like rocks, water, and air. How are these parts connected? For example, think of some parts in a Florida swamp ecosystem. What do a rock, a cypress tree, an alligator, and a heron really have in common? An ecologist is a person who studies ecosystems. To an ecologist, the parts of an ecosystem have something very important in common. In fact, you could say they are all the same deep down. All the parts of an ecosystem are made of matter. Matter makes up the air, water, soil, rocks, animals, plants, and everything else. Matter is made up of tiny atoms that are too small to see. There are many different kinds of atoms, and these atoms can combine to form a huge number of different kinds of molecules. Individually, atoms and molecules are too small to see. However, billions and trillions of atoms and molecules work together can make up a rock, a tree, a bird, or even an alligator. What does it really mean to say that an animal is made of matter? If you could look inside the body of an alligator, you would see muscles, bones, blood, and different body systems. All of the parts of an alligator are made of matter. For example, let's zoom in on a muscle. The muscle is made up of, very, of smaller parts. Those parts are made up of even smaller parts, which are made of molecules. Those molecules are made up of atoms. It's all matter. So here's the alligator. This is a close-up of muscles as seen through a microscope. Here is an even closer view of the matter that makes up a muscle. This image shows a molecule of a mus of a, a model of a molecule that makes up muscles. We can't really show what the molecules look like. The individual molecules are too small to see even with a microscope. A full-grown alligator may weigh 360 kilograms, 800 pounds. That's a lot of matter. Where does it all come from? How does an alligator grow to be so big? Alligators and other animals never stop grow growing. Even an adult animal that has stopped getting bigger keeps growing new skin and blood. If an animal gets wounded or breaks a bone, it can grow to repair the damaged parts. All that new bone, muscle, blood, and skin doesn't just appear from nothing. Since an animal is made of matter, when it grows, it needs to add more matter to its bones, muscles, and other parts. That's how animals grow. Alligators are 15 centimeters long when they hatch, but they can grow to about four meters or 13 feet long. The new matter needed for growth comes from what an animal eats. Food is also made of matter. When an animal eats food, it is eating billions and billions of atoms and molecules. These atoms and molecules are all, mat are all matter that the animal uses to grow. Inside the animal's body, the food molecules are broken down and used to build new molecules that make up bone, blood, skin, muscle, skin, and other body parts. The alligator is eating a bird it caught in the swamp. Not all matter that an animal gets at, eats gets added to the animal's body. Some of the matter isn't used by the mat animal. This matter ends up as a different kind of waste, including droppings. More important, the animal uses some of the food matter to get energy. Animals need energy to move and do all of the things animals do. When an animal uses matter to get energy, 
that matter is changed and released as gases into the air. So that is animal waste. Ecologists think a lot about eating. Eating is one of the most important ways that matter moves through an ecosystem. All the animals in the ecosystem need to eat. Most of those animals are also eaten by some other animal. In order to understand an ecosystem, it's important to figure out what eats what. Figuring out what eats what can be difficult. An ecosystem may have countless organisms of many different kinds. All those different kinds of organisms interact in complicated ways. To find out what each kind of animal eats, scientists collect data. They observe animals in nature and record what the animals eat. If scientists find a dead animal, they may observe the inside of its stomach. That way, they can gather data about what the animal ate before it died. Scientists also look at data that other scientists have collected in the past. These ecologists are gathering data about tiny animals that live in the swamp. Ecologists need a lot of data to figure out what eats what. Ecologists make diagrams to show what eats what in an ecosystem. Let's look at the example of an alligator again. Alligators often eat birds called great blue herons. Great blue herons often eat carp, a kind of fish. Carp often eat bladderwort, a kind of plant that grows in swamps. A diagram showing how these organisms interact is called a food chain. So here's an example of a food chain. The arrows in a food chain diagram show the direction that matter moves through an ecosystem. When a carp eats a bladderwort plant, some of the matter from the plant gets turned into a part of the body of the carp. When a heron eats the carp, some of the matter from the carp gets turned into part of the body of the heron. When an alligator eats the heron, some of the matter from that heron gets turned into a part of the body of the alligator. The same matter that made up the bladderwort plant eventually ends up as part of the alligator's body. Where did the matter that makes up the bladderwort plant come from? Plants don't eat, but they do take in matter from the air and water. They use this matter to make their own food. Plants can use the food they make to build their bodies. Only plants and plant-like organisms such as algae can take in matter from non-living things and use it to make food. That's why you will find plants or algae at the beginning of most every food chain. A food chain helps trace the way matter moves through an ecosystem, but it doesn't give the whole picture. A food chain shows just one food for each animal, but most animals eat more than one kind of food. To understand an ecosystem better, ecologists combine many food chains together to make a food web. A food web shows that some animals eat more than one kind of food. It shows that some organisms are eaten by more than one kind of animal. Food webs show how lots of different food chains are connected. On the next page is a food web for the alligator's ecosystem. It shows that alligators don't just eat herons. They also eat raccoons, marsh rabbits, frogs, and carp. In fact, most of the organisms in a food web eat or are eaten by many other organisms. This food web still doesn't show all of the different relationships in this ecosystem. There are thousands of kinds of organisms in the ecosystem, and the food web only shows a few of them. The food web also doesn't show any of the non-living parts of the ecosystem, like air, water, and rocks. Still, matter moves back and forth between living and non-living things all the time. For example, Whenever an, eco an animal breathes in and out, matter moves through the ecosystem in complicated ways that are challenging to trace, but it is still all the same matter. And here is the food web. See, 
producers, consumers, and at the top you have the predators. When ecologists look at ecosystems, they see matter moving and changing, going from one part of the ecosystem to another. Matter from a bladderwort plant will someday become part of the body of an alligator. Matter from the body of an alligator will someday become part of the air and soil. In an ecosystem, the same matter keeps getting recycled over and over. It becomes part of many different living and non-living things. Alligators, rocks, birds, plants, and air. Matter makes up everything in the ecosystem.